My name is Claire Hedden. I'm the curator here at the McLean County Arts Center, and I'm in the Brandt Gallery where we're exhibiting Point, Line, Shape, Form, an exhibition of five Illinois artists. The words point, line, shape, form outline the basic principles of geometry and suggest a commonality among the work of five Illinois artists. Juan Fernandez, Jonathan Higgins, Mark Holmes, Travis Jensen, and John Nelson create non-representational modernist artwork, defining spaces with lines and planes, isolating and unifying composition with color, and creating movement and visual vibrations. The work they create is an exercise of what they believe to be essential, pure, and necessary. What separates their artwork from abstract modernism art is an embracing of postmodernist technologies, traditional art media, hand as tool, layering of media inherent qualities, or juxtaposition of characteristics. The artist's aesthetic may appear familiar at a glance, but it is full of surprises. So I'm Jonathan Higgins. Uh, I um, am an artist here in Bloomington. I've been living in Bloomington now for 14 years. I've, I have a I'm primarily a printmaker and I have a uh, fine art press here in Bloomington that is um, it's both uh, my studio but it's also my business and I'm a print publisher so I have I work with um, contemporary artists who I invite to come to Mannequin Press whose work I'm interested in and um, I work closely with those artists um, making prints, whether they're woodcuts, monotypes, etchings, um, they're either limited edition or a series of unique prints. And um, very, very old school analog, uh, uh, <clears throat> traditional uh, print media. I'm, I'm also an artist when I have time. <laughs> when I'm not working with other artists on their work, I. Uh, I make my own work. Uh, usually I work in printmaking. Um, a year ago, I had the opportunity to uh, do an artist residency in Ireland at the Bowling Glen Arts Foundation, which is in County Mayo. It's a tiny little town on uh, the Atlantic coast of Ireland. And um, there's a wonderful artist residency there. And uh, I went there with my family. My wife was also a, uh, an artist in residence, but uh, I wasn't 100% clear what I, what I was going to do. And on the way, we stopped in London and I saw an exhibition there at the British Museum on Silver Point. And it was primarily a historical uh, exhibition and there were uh, old master drawings, some for, from uh, Leonardo da Vinci from like these in, uh, northern, you know, Germany and uh, Dutch, <laughs> just beautiful uh, silver point drawings. Most of them were very small uh, and almost like scraps of paper. I think they were done uh, primarily as studies um, for paintings that, uh, that would later become paintings. And a lot of the artists at that time used silver point uh, because graphite pencils had not been invented yet. So um, basically the technique is using a piece of metal, it's usually a wire, a uh, silver wire, or you can also use copper, brass, lead, gold, and platinum, and aluminum. And um, so if you have uh, you know, either a piece of the metal or a wire that's held in a stylus and you have a treated surface like a paper or board that's treated with gesso or gouache paint. And the technique basically is you're you know, drawing, dragging the, the piece of metal across the surface and you're leaving a trace of metal behind. And uh, the different metals have sort of subtly different colors. Um, <clears throat> silver is very, uh, goes down sort of gray as you might imagine. Uh, copper goes down a bit more reddish, warmer. And over time, the unique thing about the uh, metal point is that over time, the material responds to um, 
uh, uh, environmental conditions. So it oxidizes and it will gradually uh, change color and darken over time. And um, that was something that was really fascinating to me. Um, I had worked, I'd sort of dabbled in Silver Point a little bit previously and um, I was interested in the technique and the thing that, that drew me to it was this sort of transformation. So the, the idea that you would you'd make a, a drawing but over time it's going to change and a year from you make the drawing and it looks a certain way and a year from now it's going to look different and in 10 years or 50 years down the road it's going to look even different and um, so I like that sort of that transformational aspect and the idea that part of the part of the artwork is doesn't rest in your hands it's part of the material and um, part of the environment where it's going to be <coughs> and uh, I've always sort of been, been interested in that idea. Juan Fernandez's photographic project facade focuses on the familiar yet strange exterior forms of buildings. He states, quote, I want the peculiarities to exist as metaphors for uneasiness, rejection, and isolation. These feelings are illustrated as odd photographic moments within a landscape of form, structure, and order. This is accomplished by using the innate qualities of the photographic process, coupled with varying amounts of digital manipulation. Specifically, each image is cleansed of distracting elements. The overemphasis of their geometry makes the buildings feel solid, opaque, and uninhabitable, with few windows and doors, some missing doorknobs. Exhibiting two distinct sculptural bodies of work, Mark Holmes' constant interest of manipulating geometric form, color engagement, and creating movement through drawn lines are apparent. His wall constructions are structures of shaped planes, drawn lines, and shells of form that seem to be building as well as unbuilding themselves. As much as the wall constructions are seemingly in motion, his large vertical clay objects are static and monumental. He states, quote, everything I'd ever made, buildings, furniture, sculpture, had been constructed from hard materials like wood or metal through many binary acts of severing or attaching one thing and another. And because most of my skills with materials were really skills with tools, I wanted to shape things without tools. What finally resulted were vertical objects, six to seven feet tall, made by pinching together small pieces of clay over a period of several months. Travis Jansen's linear prints on stretched book cloth are optically engaging, shifting two dimensions to three. The repetition of lines in increasing and decreasing degrees of thickness create shape and form and a vibration that encourages the eye to move back and forth, up and down, in and out, or around and around. He states, quote, as the lines of these compositions interact with the woven cloth support, interference or moiré patterns frequently result, forming additional line structures. Paradoxically, both quiet and dynamic, these works allow viewers to immerse themselves in contemplative abstraction while also locating familiar ground within the images. John Nelson's stretched linen acrylic paintings explore color relationships through square compositions. Color becomes opaque solid shape when applied strategically on the front of the canvas, or ephemeral haze when applied to the back of the linen or the wood of the stretcher bars. Harmony and discord are explored through tone and hue, proportion and composition, opacity and transparency. I am engaged in the dynamic of taking different things and mashing them together, states Nelson.
Thank you.